So hello everyone, welcome here to the Twin Ring Motegi for week two of the iRacing.com Prototype and GT Challenge Open Series. We are here, obviously as I just said, at the Twin Ring Motegi, the 2.98 mile 14 turn road course. Let's go through the starting grid as they are finishing up their warm up. There's six prototypes in today's race. On pole is Paul Ilbrink and alongside him Fabio Rossi. In row number two we have Marco Arsidicano and Robert Jakowski. Uh, row three, Michael Booth and Fabricio Silva. Those are your prototypes. In GT1, we have Florian Denard, William Levisku, uh, Peter Ridley, Levin Dreconigen, as I probably butchered your name, I apologize, Stefano uh, Gurriali, Patrick Berry, and Liam Matthews. That's um, rows four through seven. Uh, David A. Jensen is on pole in GT2 in position 14, and it's Richard Sobolewski, Oliver Brandt, Jonathan Fuller, Wilm Stockmans, Andy Frame, Jonathan Butel, Jonathan Hall, Yuri Budnick, and Matt Orr are your 23 cars here today. As here they are on the grid, this is a 65 minute race. So it should be Pretty exciting here at Twin Ring Motegi as the field begins to grid up now. We will go through the classes of Lamar style racing here in the Prototype and GT Challenge Series. The LMP1 cars, the premier high-tech Lamar prototypes, the purpose-built 475 to 575, 900 kilogram, and top speed 200 mile an hour prototypes. Those prototypes aren't in this series, but they are the highest series or the highest type of prototypes in Le Mans style racing. These prototypes, the Mall Prototype 2, high tech, lower cost alternative to Prototype 1 cars, purpose built, same exact thing to the P1 cars, just slower engines, 450 to 500 horsepower, with their top speed 180 miles an hour. GT1, moderately modified production paced Grand Touring cars, those are the Corvettes in today's race, 475 to 575 horsepower, 1145 kilograms, with their top speed being 180 miles an hour. And then, the GT2 cars, which are moderately modified production-based GT cars, 450 horsepower, 1,205 kilograms, with their top speed being 150 miles an hour. Pretty much the same as the GT1 Corvettes, but they are heavier. Those are the four GTs in today's race. So here, are the top two in prototypes. Paul Ulbrink is on pole. The prototypes are flying away from the field as we are green, 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 green. here at Motegi. 65 minutes. Now, as back in GT1, Florian Denard is leading as a couple of the Corvettes nearly tangle. Smoke from the 14 of William Lefuscu and he's around into the tires already. I don't think he's very happy with that as he stopped the car as he gets out and he's being towed back to the pit lane. So Paul Ilbrink trying to pull away. He is a pro driver into turn number five and turn six here at Motegi, one of the trickiest sectors of the track. Fabio Rossi side by side with Michael Booth as Booth trying to get by. I don't think it's going to happen on the first lap, though. He'll bring pulling away. R.C. Diacano in second. Rossi, Booth, Jakubowski, as Silva trying the outside, but he's not close enough. Florian Denard leads in GT1. As Stefano Gurriali is P3. Bieri, Matthews, Ridley, that's your GT1 field. Then it's Jensen, Sobolewski, Brandt, Fuller, Stockmans, and Budnick in GT2, or along with Jonathan Hall, Boutel, Frame, and Orr. They're side by side for the last place in GT2. 
And over the radio, Levesque is not very happy. As let's go back and take a look at what happened here with um, the Corvette William Levesque on the first lap of the race as he got okay here we go so it's slow motion here going into turn one he's on the outside in car number 14 and looks like car 18 that's Peter Ridley makes contact with him and the rescue overcorrects slips in and smashes the tire barrier and it looks like Peter Ridley was A-OK -okay in car number 18 so we're back to live pictures now with Peter Ridley, uh, 12th overall. Your leader in GT1 is Florian Denard, and back up to prototypes, Paul Ilbrink is your leader in car number one. So you're coming down this straightaway into turn 11, and the television cameras don't do that justice. That's an incredible drop um, in the prototype as... Ilbrink out of the final turn, out of turn 14, back out onto the main straightaway to complete lap number two here at Twin Ring Motegi. See, so check GT2 now. Budnick and Hall had a little battle, or they might have a little battle here momentarily. As moving up through the field. So Bileski is going to battle Jensen for the GT2 lead. As he's hounding him off the road goes Sobolewski. He's pushing really hard in the Ford GT. Down the main straightaway they go. As the GT2 field, all of them are on the main straight. They're lapping at 152s. The, GT2, the GT1s are about a 145, and the prototypes are 140 if you're quick. 139 if you're quick, I should say. As we're moving forward to Sobolewski trying to catch Jensen. Car number two, so he's the highest rated driver in the GT2 field. As sideways is Stockman's nice save. Drifting the 4 GT out of the corner. But that's how you have to be fast in... Um, this car, along with the HPD, I'm not sure about the Corvette, but you have to be drifting the car. You'd give World Rally drivers a run for their money if they saw you what you're doing in these uh, these tarmac racing cars compared to what they do in their gravel rally cars. As Jensen leads in GT2, but Sobolewski is hounding the back of Jensen's Ford GT. As these are some of the fastest drivers in the GT2 field. There's not many uh, driving the Ford GT, as when this car was released, it was awful. As a lot of the drivers were turned away from it, but in this recent build, it is apparently one of the best cars to drive, so we've seen the GT2 participation go way, way, way up. And that's good to see. As we get battles like this early on in the race... Looks like to pit lane, Liam Matthews in the Lucky Strike Corvette. Damage on the left side. And this is probably an unscheduled pit stop as he needs to get that damage repaired. So as he goes down pit lane and stops in the pit box, the Lucky Strike crew will attend to his Corvette. But he will certainly drop behind all the GT2 cars as you see on the bottom of the frame here. All of them going by. As here's Frame and Butel battling again. As Frame looks to the inside, will he get it? Side by side, he cleared him. Good pass by Andy Frame in car 16. As that was for last overall and last in Ford GT, or second to last in Ford GT. So that would be battling for eighth. As Ilbrink ran a 140.456. Asidi Ikano ran a 140.335 as he's drifting that HPD out of the corner. So Ilbrink pulling away now.
as this is an interesting battle in prototypes as this is for fourth with Michael Booth, Fabricio Silva and Robert Jakubowski battling for fourth best of the rest right off the podium so six prototypes uh, seven GT1 and nine GT2 so a nice field there was this is the top split as there were two splits so there were so many cars in this in uh, registered for this race there's two splits of 23 which was kind of unfortunate as that means there were one car over the max grid and we could have ended up with 45 cars in one grid as that was not meant to be sideways Michael Booth Fabio Rossi trying to catch Marco Arcidicano as a, um, he runs way wide to get the best angle into this final complex of corners as there is the gap between Ilbrink and Arcidicano so not that much as we're about eight and a half minutes through of this race as I say it with every time I don't have access to the fancy graphics that you guys do so I actually have my smartphone with a stopwatch and once it gets to 65 minutes that will be the end of the race but I was several seconds late as they crossed the line to take the green flag so it's going to affect me all race long Michael Booth hanging on from Fabricio Silva We're now on the nose of Ilbrink's car. To the gearbox, to the roll bar. So this shows you pretty much how you have to drive, and it looks he is way, way off the pace compared to, or no, he's not. I, What am I talking about? It looked like he was way, way off the pace, as he might be trying to save a little bit of fuel, although fuel saving you have to do a lot in order to make it uh, without having to pit. And sliding out of the hairpin, turn 10, is Ilbrink. Previewing our various cameras here. This is the gyro camera. I don't exactly know why they installed one on HPD, but they did. And... From a helmet camera. At the line to end lap number six. He ran a 140 point dead, or 140 dead, so he is off the pace, trying to conserve fuel possibly. And he's going to come up on. The GT2 traffic here, going to pass Jonathan Putel, is his first victim to go a lap down here on lap number seven. As they go under the, oh wow, slipping and sliding. As I was just about to say, he's going underneath the oval here. Looks like he's having uh, issues. Here's Paul Elbrink. But as he's going to pass Jonathan Butel, nice and clean through turn eight. And into turn number nine, he's going to want the 4GT to keep Mark, uh, Marco Asidiacano right behind him as Asidiacano drifts the car out of the corner. And now he passes Andy Frame. Remember, there was a nice pass between those two 4GTs. He's going to get off the corner as these are, HPDs are slipping and sliding more than usual, as I've noticed. Typically, they don't slip and slide this much, but today they are is into turn 11 heavy heavy braking if you miss your braking by a millimeter you're gonna have fun in the sand trap at least that's what I noticed when I drove so Matt Orr, Jonathan Fuller and Yuri Budnick are going to be the next victims as Oliver Brandt and Richard Sobolewski are having a nice battle for second in GT2 looks like Sobolewski saving his tires and fuel it's like I said, the GT2 cars have to pit a couple more times than the prototypes and the GT1s. I think the GT1 and 2 have to pit on the same amount of times. But prototypes have to pit only once for fuel. I'm not sure if the GT2 cars have to pit for uh, tires. 
but sliding, that might give you an indication of either he's driving really, really hard, or he's just trying to stay away from Oliver Brandt in car number three. These two battling hard for second place in GT2, as Paul Ilbrink is going to be catching them soon enough. As here is Ilbrink passing Yuri Budnick in GT2. So it looks like this sector of track is one of the more popular places to get traffic as he gets the slipstream from the GT2 car of Wim Stockman's. And that even that little tiny bit of slipstream counts to stay ahead of all the other prototypes. As the City of Khan, though, is probably going to do the same thing with Budnick. He drafts up and sneaks out from behind the Ford GT. So we're going to go back to this GT2 battle. They're not giving up as a nice livery with the, uh, the Team Falcon Tire Ford GT. As it looks like it's, it's a Team Falcon Tire-esque American Le Mans Series livery. A nice livery for Oliver Brandt. As Ilbrink now, hopefully he doesn't destroy this battle here because they're having a nice battle in the GT2 category as Ilbrink goes right on by and now Brandt trying as he looked to the outside to get the slipstream off the HPD couldn't make it happen and the gap is a couple car lengths now on the nose now of Oliver Brandt's car it's the sensation of speed is much, much, much higher than um, it would normally be. As flying past goes the HPD. He looks like he's off the road. Marco Acidiacano as he got by him, but that was a risky, risky move for second place in prototypes and overall. It looks like uh, Jonathan Putel pitted already, as over the radio he said pitting out. So he must have pitted already, or he did, obviously. As Denard's leading still in GT1. We're waiting for pit strategy from the, the GT cars, but it doesn't look like there's much. As five Corvettes are still in the race, so it looks like we've lost two of them. like we have most of the GT or all of the GT2 field as we find Fabio Rossi passing Richard Sobolewski and Sobolewski was all over the track in turn 14. This straightaway isn't the longest straightaway. Uh, between turns 10 and 11 are the, the longest straightaway here at Twin Ring Motegi. Here's Peter Ridley. Remember, he had that contact on the first lap of the race. Tenth overall. Looks like he's fourth in the Corvettes. As now the Corvettes get to pass the Fords. So GT1 on GT2. As this is what the beauty of mixed class racing. You have three separate classes of cars racing for their own race. But they have to interact with the other classes. And you can see the speed difference between the GT1 and GT2 right there as Florian Denard flies past Jonathan Boutel. 16 minutes are in the books. So far, we are on lap number 9, or lap number 10, I should say, once I find the leading prototype. And that is Paul Ilbrink. He is three quarters of the way done with lap number 10 here at Twin Ring Motegi. As the prototypes... They go flat out, and then they pit with about, uh, let's say 20, 20 minutes to go as a tank, uh, depending on how you use it, can last that long. Uh, there's a switch inside the car that you can control your fuel usage, as probably Ilbrink has that dialed down to the lowest setting to where he doesn't use all his, all his fuel, excuse me, um, so he doesn't have to pit. It's pretty much impossible to go on one tank unless you effectively drive at the pace of a tortoise as um, 
It's possible, but it's really, really difficult, and you have to be saving all race long. You can't just save with 20 minutes to go. And it doesn't look like uh, Ilbrink is saving, but it looks like Arcidia Kano might be saving, as his last lap was a 140.6. Ilbrink was a 139.6. So he is pulling away here. Fabricio Silva trying to get by Michael Booth for fourth overall as the B-class driver versus the A-class driver. That's, that's, that's going to be really confusing as his his paint scheme has car 25 on it, but he's not car 25, he's car 13. That's going to be uh, throwing me off all race long. So we have a bit of a, a bit of downtime here. Uh, you can get connected with ASN, obviously, unfortunately, not right now with me directly in the commentary box, as all of our broadcasts are going to be delayed for some time. But you can connect with us at facebook.com slash automotive sports network, twitter.com slash ASNTV underscore USA, and use the hashtag ASNTV USA. If you want to race broadcasted here in the Automotive Sports Network, you can visit our website, asntv.tk. Go to the page, Need a Broadcast, or Want a Broadcast, I think I titled it, as I have no idea what my own web pages are called. I am a genius. Um, and there are details as to how you can get your races here on the Automotive Sports Network. As for right now, it will be tape delayed, but we are working really, really hard to try and get our live broadcasts going up again. Remember, we had that back in, I believe, January until our director quit over a spat in the NASA Rallycross Challenge. Because that was very unfortunate. But we are trying our best with a one-man team, as uh, Victor Valley has stopped working on the broadcast. He is instead our creative producer, as I've been looking to assign him to work on the websites. So it would be just me directing, commentating, doing all this fun stuff. So... We're looking for help. If you need some br races broadcast, we'll be happy to do it. Just send us an email, asntvusa at gmail.com. Details are featured on the page on the website, asntv.tk. As Ilbrink, 139.9 on lap number 12. As the fixed races are about 16 laps. We're, we're 19 and 3 quarters done. 65 minute race here today. As Ilbrink pulls to the inside of Patrick Bieri. As Carr off the track. Looked like he was off the track. Dirt was thrown up. Might have been Jonathan Boutel. So here's Andy Frame going to get passed by Stefano Gurriali. As Gurriali in... Car number 22, ninth place overall, so he is third in GT1. This is what the glory of mixed class racing, but it's really bad up here in the commentary box because my timing and scoring is malfunctioning. Fortunate for me, as we'll eventually get all these bugs ironed out. Um, Program notes here on the Automotive Sports Network. We will have the final round of the Jesse Super Speedway Dash from Daytona uh, coming soon. We have the IGP Fun Spec Racer Ford Series. We have got a contract with them, and we have their first race um, being worked on, and their second race, I believe, is this Monday, or it would be next Monday, as my calendar is not next to me. Uh, we will have their races here on the Automotive Sports Network and the WCRA IndyCar Series. Uh, their race is tonight, Sunday night, at, I believe, Las Vegas. But I could be wrong, because if it's Las Vegas, we aren't covering it. So, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have my calendar in front of me and I can't go get it. So, they have a race tonight, and if it's any other track than Las Vegas, we'll be there. But if it's Las Vegas, we won't be, so you'll see that broadcast probably on Tuesday on demand. 
here on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ASNTVUSA, as the JSSD race will be our final race using the old NASCAR 2003 simulation as that chapter of our um, company, it will be over, and we will be strictly with iRacing from now on. As this battle is still going on with Sobolewski and Brandt, remarkably. Even while they got moved out of the way from GT1 and prototype cars. Nobody's really visited the pit lane lately. That's strange. As Ilbrink pulling away as he just passes uh, Stefano Gurriali. And Matt Oranow going to be victim to Paul Ilbrink. As uh, Ilbrink, I believe, uh, raced yesterday in the iRacing.com World Championship Grand Prix Series. Although, I'm not sure if that races every week or every two weeks. As I think it races every two weeks, so he probably did not race yesterday. As I have no idea if they had a race or not. So how much I pay attention to any other series aside from the ones that ASN covers. As last lap is a 141.4, so he's probably saving fuel, and he might not want to pit. As I wouldn't pit. I tried not to pit when I raced uh, Okayama last week, but I made the oh, it brings sideways. As he's off the road and he gets passed. No, he doesn't. By the GT2 car of Jonathan Fuller. What a save by Ilbrink. That could have ended in tears. But I tried to save fuel with 20 minutes left in the race and it didn't work. We are 24 minutes through with this race here at Motegi. As this track is in the infield of the oval and then it goes underneath the oval and goes in the outfield. And it looks on paper like a boring track, but it is an incredibly fast and flowing track. A lot of rhythm sections. As here's a GT2 battle with Will St Wim Stockmans, excuse me, and Yuri Budnick. As Budnick looks to the inside, but he's way too far back to try anything. On Stockmans in car 17. Car 12 versus car 17. And it looks like Stockmans ran it a little bit wide. As through 13 and 14... Budnick got the run on board the front end of the Ford GT. Will he be able to get it going down into turn number one? Let's see. 100 meter board. He does. He tries to the inside contact. And Budnick sideways. He saved it. But that could have ended in tears. He could have looped the car. Or even worse, drove them both off the road. As it doesn't look like there's any damage on the rear wing. Let's try and check the left side of the car here. Doesn't look like it off the road is Stockman's pr practicing his rally cross. He finds the escape road. He's back on, but he loses the position. So unfortunate for Stockman's as Ilbrink is going to pass Denard once again. Put him another lap down. You see all the dust from that GT2 battle. As Ilbrink ran a 141.4. Sobolewski, oh, Brent got by Sobolewski, so these two are still battling. Booth pitting. He ran, overran his pit stall. Fuel only for the HPD. As he's out and away. As Sobolewski now trying to pass Oliver Brandt. As these two GT2 cars battling to the death. As this, I believe, is for the lead in GT2. No, Jensen still leads in GT2, so this is second. This is the podium places in GT2. As I check my stopwatch, 26.35 it goes on. Give or take a few seconds. As like I said, I was a bit slow turning a stopwatch on as they cross the, the line to start the race. Is not very happy. Is Stockman's. As we're trying to find 
Yuri Budnick. I think there he is. Because on the radio was Wim Stockman's Thanks for ruining my race. So that's not very good. Paul Ilbrink now is going to pass Yuri Budnick and put that GT2 car another lap down on the outside. That's, oh, that's incredibly risky, in my opinion. Flying is Paul Ilbrink. Such a huge amount of speed in that uh, turn 7 8 complex. Because that's pretty much a rhythm section. As if you're not on your game, you can completely mess it up and go off the road. So here's Peter Ridley. Now Robert Jakubowski in the prototype, P4 in prototypes. Going to be passing car number 10, that's Jonathan Fuller. And the DuPont car. Looks like he's from Central Eastern Europe in that club. Florian Denard still leading in GT1. He ran a pole time of 144.477. So the entire, as I'm looking over the grid here, as the director told me that I had 60 seconds to do the grid until they gridded, so I didn't have time to tell you the qualifying times. Ilbrink was faster than Rossi by three tenths of a second, and then Arcidia Cano and Rossi were 138 eighths. So they were pretty much on the same time. As Soboleski and Brandt, their battle gets messed up. Soboleski has fun mowing some grass as Ilbrink passes them. So the entire field, except from Fabricio Silva, Yuri Budnick, and Matt Orr, set qualifying times. Pole in GT1 was a 144.4, and pole in GT2 is a 151.1. That's your time difference. Is Patrick Bieri goes by a GT2 car, as I couldn't see the number. Looks like it was 19, so that's Matt Orr. That's car number 5. That's Jonathan Hall with... Car 23, Jakubowski, or Jakubowski, excuse me. So I can admit, these European names are really hard for me to pronounce. But same with Italian names, as Soboleski and Arcidia Cano, as I believe I aced his pronunciation of his name, but if I still messed up, I apologize. As Arcidia Cano goes by Soboleski in car 4. And now he's going to pass Oliver Brandt in the car number 3. Jensen was only a tenth faster than Soboleski, but Soboleski got held up in traffic. So that's why he's so far ahead as Ilbrink goes by. He's going to end lap 18. Here at Twin Ring, Motegi still hasn't pitted yet. Have the prototypes except for Michael Booth. Uh, there's Jonathan Butel. Fabricio Silva and back to Ilbrink. Looks like that's the flag of the Netherlands. Although my flags, my flag knowledge in Europe is quite bad. Because the Netherlands and France almost have the same flag, but France is vertical and the Netherlands are horizontal. Look at me learning like geom or geography class. Apparently, flags are in geometry class now. Um, going underneath the bridge, exiting the oval now, the infield course, I should say, is Ilbrink. He ran a 142.6 last lap, so he's definitely. Saving his tires and saving his fuel, perhaps. Not every single lap, but he's saving it once in a while so he doesn't have to take that much fuel when he pits. As you really don't have to pit in the HPD, as the tire model really hasn't been perfected to where the tires fall off. Well, that's just me. So you can push and be perfectly fine. A City Akano there. Rossi passing car four of Soboleski. He's third place in prototypes, so he is on the podium. Looks like we're going to have three different flags on the podium if the race were to end right now. That would be the Netherlands, Italy, and Brazil. It's a very much an international affair here in the open uh, race. As it's Oliver Brandt in car number three, the Falcon Tire car. As looks like there's Derek Spear Designs logo on 
that prototype. And lap 19 now. Close, or as my stopwatch, I'm looking at my stopwatch. We are halfway through. We are about 32.15, so in the next 30 seconds or so, we'll be halfway through this race. It's gone relatively quickly. As that's Florian Denard still leading in GT1. What a race he's had. As Marco Asidiacano now can push, push, push. But he wasn't as quick as Ilbrink that lap. Ilbrink pulling away. In turn nine. As that corner's really difficult to get through. And into the hairpin. There is the gap between first and second. Ilbrink drifting the car into turn ten. Nobody has visited the pit lane lately, not that I've noticed. Looks like there's an Okiyama logo on uh, Bieri's car. That's odd. But he might be sponsored by them, so who knows? Not going to ask any questions. As a GT2 battle, Hall goes by Stockman's for position. Looks like that's third in GT2. No, it's not. That's, I think, fifth in GT2. Is my timing and scoring doesn't give me class position, it only gives me an overall position, so I have to completely guess as to who is leading in class. Because I can try my best to get the timing and scoring working, but I don't think it would work. So let me pull up the replay screen here and try and get this to work. As I'm pulling up my timing and scoring. As... There we go! As that popped up, I didn't want that. My timing and scoring is up now. Thirty minutes left to go here at Motegi. Your leader is Paul Ilbrink. In leader in GT1 is Florian Denard. Leader in GT2, David Jensen. So I have my timing and scoring working, so I don't have to sound like a complete fool when I try and think who's in the lead of the classes. Fastest lap is oh, that's a they're they're not in minute form. They're in second form, so the only car in the 39 second bracket is Paul Ilbrink, and then it's Marco Acidiacano with a uh, 40.6. So Ilbrink is flying. My timing and scoring is in kilometers, because I almost freaked out when I saw that Ilbrink was going 201 I thought it was miles, but it said 160 miles an hour, 201 kilometers. So here is Matt Orr and Fabricio Silva, as Silva obviously pulling away from the GT2 car. We have two cars out of the race, Liam Matthews and William Levesque, but 21 cars are still in the race. Um... Fabricio Silva is looking to go off the lead lap. He is going into turn 11, and Ilbrink's coming out of turn 10. So Ilbrink on blistering pace with 28 and a half minutes left to go. Ilbrink comes down, crosses the line, ends lap 22. Arcidia Cano. The gap is 9 seconds. And it is hovering around 9 seconds. Last lap was a 149. 
so it was a five tenths or not five tenths almost 1.3 seconds the gap between Ilbrink and Asidia Kano Florian Denard leading in GT1 the interval is 11 seconds from him to Levin Drikonogen Drikonogen as I need to learn to pronounce the European names better then it's Peter Ridley, Stefano Gurriali and Patrick Bieri your GT1 field, David A. Jensen, Oliver Brandt, Richard Soboleski, Yuri Budnick, Wim Stockmans, Jonathan Hall, Jonathan Fuller, Matt Orr, Andy Frame, and Jonathan Boutel, your GT2 field. 21 of the 23 cars still running with 27 minutes left to go. I'm incredibly glad that you can join us here in the Automotive Sports Network for our first ever broadcast of the iRacing.com Prototype and GT Challenge Open Series. As um, It's a one-man operation here at the Automotive Sports Network, and I'm trying to give my best run to Glacier TV as Glacier did some races last season so I hope that you guys found that my one-man job was just as good so I'm not gonna say it as better or as better better than Glacier because they have live broadcast with fancy timing and scoring that actually works and everything as I do not at the time being um, I'm working really hard I spent several hours before the race trying to get our graphics package working, but I wanted to rip my hair out, so I stopped doing that. As off the track goes Budnick, really, really, in a fast corner. Turn four. That could have ended really badly, but it didn't. So Bolesky, um, in a battle with... He's not in a battle. He's five seconds behind Brandt, so that battle ended. Ridley's going to pass Brandt, so third in GT1, and the gap is still nine seconds from Ilbrink to Asidia Kano. As trying to find him, oh, or getting passed by Asidia Kano. Oh, sketchy out of turn four. As there's Ilbrink going to pass Jonathan Hall and put that GT2 car another lap down. So Fabrizio. Um, Fabricio Silva is looking to be lapped here momentarily. So the first of the prototypes took him 24 laps to get lapped. 25-15 left to go. Here at Motegi. As I'm not sure if this is appearing on the video, but if it is, there might be a couple black lines in the middle of the screen, and I apologize. But I don't know what's being transmitted, as I don't have access to the graphics or anything. So I apologize if there's an annoying black line in the middle of the screen. I can't remove it. It's Yuri Budnick, car 12. He is... In fourth in GT2. Soboleski is holding a podium place. As so is Brandt. And your leader in GT2, David Jensen, who has led from the start. As we're making our way, here's Fabio Rossi. P3 in prototypes. 24 seconds behind Ilbrink. As Asidio Kano wants to try and catch Ilbrink as it's the gap's now 10 seconds so it's increased his last lap was a 141.5 he'll bring a 140.3 and Silva 142.15 so he's gonna be lapped momentarily as I don't know if it was being held up by traffic or he just doesn't have that much experience on this track no his fastest lap is a one uh, 140.838 so he is on pace with the rest of the field him and Michael Booth have been in a battle it seems Time-wise, not position-wise, as there's the separation of 21 seconds between them. Timing and scoring having a blast. As Ilbrink slowly catching up to Patrick Bieri, who is fifth in GT2. Stefano uh, Guerrilla, or that's GT1, excuse me. As to the inside is Ilbrink past Yuri Budnick and Bieri. So that is 4th and 5th in GT2 and GT1 battling. 
His next target is Fabricio Silva in the Prototype 2 category. As remember, Prototype 2, as I said at the top of the show, are the um, fastest prototypes here in the iRacing.com Prototype GT Challenge Series. As um, Prototype 1, the factory-based efforts, they go over 200 miles an hour or not in this series. As there's not, there's no factories that wanted to support a car. So instead, HPD uh, has the P2 category with the customer cars sorted out. And we do have prototypes in the Prototype and GT Challenge. As Fabricio Silva looking to go off the lead lap here momentarily. I don't think he's looking forward to it, but it's going to happen. As Fabio Rossi, third place in prototypes, 14 seconds behind for Mar uh, Marco Arcidiacano, 24 behind Ilbrink. Here's uh, Levin Draconen passing, I believe that's Butel, with a nice caution type livery on the back of his car. And Silva going to pass Soboleski, and Ilbrink is there. I don't think Gilbrink cares that much that he's going to lap the car, or lap Silva, but it's going to happen because his last lap is a 143.7 was Silva. And here's Sobolewski getting lapped again, your third place driver in GT2. Timing and scoring is freaking out because now he gets lapped. So put another lap down the GT2 car, Richard Sobolewski. As Florian Denard is going to pass car 16, Andy Frame. Remember, Frame had a nice battle, I believe, with Butel. It was early, early on in the race. Your leader in GT1. 11 seconds separate him and Levin Draconin. Draconigen, I should say. Excuse me there. Fabricio Silva now passing Oliver Brandt as Ilbrink is catching him every so often every lap underneath the bridge he's gonna put him and Brant in between oh that could have ended in tears every time you try and pass a car on the outside it could have ended in tears that's just my opinion 20 and a half minutes left to go here at Motegi and Silva gives it up so there's five cars on the lead lap all prototypes and we're gonna go forward and try and find Michael Booth there he is He's got a long way until he's going to be lapped. I don't think it'll happen in 20 minutes. Although Paul Ilbrink is one of the fastest drivers. He is a pro world championship driver, as I said earlier. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the coverage so far. As I'm a one-man uh, job here at ASN. And throughout the race, it might seem boring that I'm blabbing on about nothing. And there might be periods of silence. As that's where I would really appreciate people helping. Uh, if you would like to get involved here. On the Auto Motor Sports Network, like I said earlier, um, visit our Facebook page or shoot ASN an email at asntvusa at gmail.com. I will check that and get back to you. As Oliver Brandt with David Jensen, that is the battle for GT2, and Brandt six seconds behind him. He has been, I have not been paying attention to GT2. He has been picking his way towards the GT2 lead. I did a bit of advertising on the radio there. As Fabricio Silva, P6 in prototypes, off the lead lap, obviously. As we're going to go to Oliver Brandt, he is getting closer and closer to David Jensen, and I think Jensen's pushing like mad. Falcon Momo car of Oliver Brandt. Inside the Ford GT. Look at all the dirt and grime on the windshield. I've been driving open cockpit cars, the HPD to be exact, for the last couple of months. I forgot how it was to have a top over my head and a windshield in front of my face. And that's why I drive an HPD, so I don't have grime all over the windshield. That is what Oliver Brand has to see to try and catch 
car number two, David Jensen, as the gap is 5.7 seconds now with about 18 minutes. We're just under 18 minutes left to go here at Motegi. Off the road, it looks like, is Brandt. And here's Jensen. Helmet cam inside this Ford GT. Look at all the grime on the windshield. As we're going to go back now to our TV cameras. As Paul Ilbrink has led from the start pretty much. As he took the lead, he start, started on pole, took the lead, and hasn't left, uh, hasn't gone back. Fabio Rossi in the pit lane, my timing and scoring updates. So I'm going to cycle through. Rossi in the pit lane, leaving the pit lane. Third, where's Jakubowski? He is no, oh, he's in the pit lane too. So third and fourth in prototypes are pitting. A city Econo must have taken tires. Rossi took fuel only. And Jakubowski in his pit box, jacked up the car. He is taking tires in car number 23. So expect his stop to be around 13. Drop the jack. 14.1 for Jakubowski. And Michael Booth gets by him. So change of position in prototypes. Booth goes up to P4. He had a nice pit stop earlier in the race when my timing and scoring wasn't working. As Rossi is now 11 seconds behind our City Econo as our City Econo pitted and he is 41, 42 seconds behind Ilbrink. As we're going to find Ilbrink here on the circuit. As I don't believe he is going to pit, but if he does, he pretty much has it in the bag. But don't say anything until the fat lady sings. Well, I just kind of did, so never mind. As into turn number four, once again, it goes Paul Ilbrink. As I raced with him at Road Atlanta in the Fix Series at the end of last season... And he was incredibly fast, so I didn't really see him that much. He was only passing me. I think he lapped me, but I'm not sure. But he is a pro world championship driver, like I've said five times before. So he is one of the fastest drivers on the service. So when you're in a race with a pro driver, you're pretty much not going to win. Unless you're also a pro driver. And then you'll have a nice little duel. So, Astidio Kano, previous lap was his fastest, a 39.974. As my timing and scoring has only uh, been working for a couple, like, about 20 minutes, I would say. Um, is I not good on time? So, it only counts that Budnick, Jakubowski, Rossi, and Astidio Kano pitted. Although, I'm pretty sure the other GT cars pitted earlier on in the race. As he's going to end lap number 30 here at Motegi. As you can join the conversation. Well, you can't really join the conversation. This is a tape delayed broadcast. But you can join the conversation um, about our programming that's coming up. Hashtag ASNTVUSA or Twitter.com slash ASNTVUSA. And we will happily um, wanting to talk to our fans. We'd love to have fan interaction here for the Automotive Sports Network. That's one thing we strive on. Fan interaction. As next week, uh, we'll be at Brands Hatch, as I remember. Um, Mertz Racing Technologies will lug their HPD there, and I will race the Saturday race, and then put my suit on and hop in the commentary box for ASN for the Sunday race, along with several fixed races uh, during the week. David A. Jensen still leads in GT2. Uh, we're going to find him. There he, you know, that's Bieri. There's Jensen coming out of turn three and down the straightaway here. So he's got a nice gap of 6.7 seconds over Oliver Brandt, and the, the gap is 42.4 over Ilbrink and a city of Kano. And I don't believe that Ilbrink has to pit because he's been saving fuel all race long. He's led all 30 laps so far in the pit lane is leaving Draconogen
So he pitted from second in GT1. Peter Ridley is going to go by Draconogen now for second in GT1. So change of position on the podium in GT1 as Ghirielli goes by. So Draconogen loses second, or second and third, so he's fourth in GT1 now. That's not very fun to be passed twice. His timing and scoring is saying two laps, the interval. Yes, it is. I believe he's pitting. Let's find... No. Let's find... Yes, he is! Jensen pitting in the GT2 Ford. So to the lead, Oliver Brandt. So he exits the pit lane on lap 28. Oliver Brandt is on lap 29. So, lead change in GT2. Looks like Jensen only took fuel only. Gaps 41.8 back to prototypes. And I'm incredibly curious as if Paul Ilbrink will pit. But it doesn't look like anytime soon that he's going to be... Ah, never mind. Ilbrink to the pit lane. So now we will have to be paying attention to timing and scoring as timing and scoring will start to fall. Ilbrink will probably be only taking fuel only, so let's check this pit stop. In the pit lane, stops on his marks, is Paul Ilbrink, your leader in prototypes and overall. Jacks aren't going up. Fuel being added to the race car. Timing and scoring. 7.8 is the pit stop for Paul Ilbrink. In the pit lane as well is Wim Stockman's. He is 5th in GT2, so no problems whatsoever. Paul Ilbrink holds the lead over Marco Acidiacano in car number 7. So as he starts lap 32, we are 10.5 minutes left in this race. As unless Ilbrink runs off the road, gets crashed into engine... F well, there's a lot of variables in racing, so I'm not going to say them all because I'll be talking for 10.5 minutes. But if something happens to Ilbrink... It's Acidia Cano's race as he has 15 seconds over Rossi and Jakubowski is battling with Rossi as I check my timing and scoring. No, he's not. Is Jakubowski in the pit lane? So I'm trying to find him on track. There he is. That's him with Michael Booth, excuse me. As Michael Booth is fourth player, as these two are having a nice battle. So it's Ilbrink, Acidiacano, Rossi, Booth, Jakubowski, Silva, Dinar, Draconogen, Ridley, Guerrieri, or Garali, Bieri, Jensen, Brandt, Sobolewski, Budnick, Stockmans, Hall, Fuller, Orframe, Butel, Matthews, and Leviscu. So those, that's your running order, 23 cars of the top split. As I believe we were one car too many to have a 45 car split here this week in Motegi. As Jakubowski trying to look to the outside, he held the inside, does Booth. On the outside, Jakubowski, does he clear him in turn? Four contact! And around goes Booth in car 13. So lucky number 13, Michael Booth, gets turned around in turn four. So let's take a quick look at what just happened here. From the chopper camera, looks like on the outside is Jakubowski. He clears him. He had him cleared, and Booth overdrove the corner and took himself out. Nice save by Jakubowski, Jakubowski to keep the car going. But back to live pictures now. We're trying to find the correct camera here. There we go. So Michael Booth might have a little bit of suspension damage, but he's eight seconds behind Jakubowski now. There's Jensen who is still leading in GT2. Or Brant's leading in GT2, as my timing and scoring does not like to update very often. And Brant, he overshot his pit box way too far! Wow! That's something you never see. He locked him up and overdrove the pit box a long time, so there goes the lead in GT2 for Oliver Brant. 
So that's really, really odd to see someone that far, a car length and a half, out of their pit stall as my mic mutes itself for some odd reason. Sorry about that. So your leader, Paul Elbrink, and then it's Florian Denard, David A. Jensen, your leaders in class, with seven and a half minutes left to go here at Twin Ring Motegi. Hopefully you've been sitting and joining me for the entire 65 minutes today. My stopwatch says 57.37, so it's right around there. So car number one, Paul Ilbrink, leading in prototypes and in overall, as that's obvious. We're going to find him now. Guriali, Butel, Stockmans. This is a nice battle. Let's stay on this for a little bit. Butel trying to hold off Wim Stockmans. Remember, Stockmans had contact with Yuri Budnick. So this is for position in GT2. And Robert Jakubowski, fourth place in prototypes, as Booth sliding out of turn 11. So Jensen is back leading in GT2 after Brant's horrific pit stop. As up front... Paul Ilbrink, as there's the City of Kano leaving turn 10. And Ilbrink in turn 11. The gap is 10.4 seconds. The City of Kano hasn't been setting blistering lap times, but Ilbrink ran a 142.3. And the City of Kano a 140.6. So six minutes left to go, ending lap 35. Here at Twin Ring Motegi. As the weather is beautiful here today. 78 degrees, clear skies with a 2 mile an hour wind to the north at this uh, 2.98 mile 14 turn twin ring Motegi road course as the eyes on IndyCar series used to come here as that, that, never mind I don't want to talk about the IndyCar series as Jonathan Hall loops it in turn three, turns 2 and 3 right in front of Paul Elbrink but no harm, no foul IndyCar used to come here and race on the oval but after the Earthquakes, I believe it was in 2011, they came and raced here at the road course and then never came back to Twin Ring Motegi. I don't exactly know why. So I believe the Asian Le Mans series is going to come here, but I might be wrong on that as well. And now Soboleski getting passed again by Ilbrink. So, four laps down is Richard Soboleski. So, that's Ilbrink ex exiting turn 10, and this is the support um, pit lane and starting grid, I believe. Or, it's the west course. As in turn 11 is Paul Ilbrink going to be passing second place Oliver Brandt in GT2. And Jakubowski gets by Butel and Stockmans. These two still having a nice battle in GT2 for themselves. As we're having major camera issues, as I apologize for this. I have no idea what the source is. Major, major issues. I sincerely apologize for this, guys, as trying to figure out what the issue is. As it might have just fixed itself. No, it didn't. As there we go, as, as soon as I say that, it has issues again. Though our machine might be having issues here, as this has been an hour-long race. But I hope it doesn't give out with four minutes left to go.
So I'm going to close my timing and scoring. No, I can't close that program. I've yet to figure out why we have such an issue. As I'm unfortunately going to have to say, we're just going to have to deal with the camera issues for the rest of the race. As I have honestly no idea why we are having so many issues, but I'm believing that it's because we wrote so much data to the hard drive as I'm believing it's probably over 50 gigabytes of footage here on this hard drive for this race as I was trying to experiment with another capturing method and um, it didn't work before the race so I had to go back to my old fraps recording as Paul Ilbrink has been blinking out throughout the race so I'm going to try and load up my timing and scoring again so I don't sound like a complete dummy as I'm calling the last lap of the race, or trying to at least. I'm going to load up my timing and scoring. That's not what I wanted. Uh, timing and scoring drivers. There we go. As we should be coming to the white flag lap here now, at Twin Ring Motegi for Paul Ilbrink. He was on 38 laps. Second place is uh, Marco Arcidiacano, who has been slowly catching him over these last 10 laps. But it's not going to happen, I don't think. As here we go, through the final complex here, Paul Ilbrink coming down. There's not going to be enough time, so white flag this time for Paul Ilbrink here at Twin Ring Motegi. So Ilbrink trying to bring it home. He's led every single lap so far in this race. The gap is 6.8 seconds to Marco Asidiacano. Asidiacano has tried all day to catch Ilbrink from the drop of the green flag to now but honestly I don't think it's going to happen unless Ilbrink runs it off the track there is your gap in prototypes Jensen leading in GT2 Denard leading in GT1 these three have take took the lead of their classes at the beginning of the race and haven't looked back I don't even think Ilbrink lost the lead on the pit stop cycle. He has kept the lead ever since the drop of the green flag. So going into turn number or going down the straight into turn 10 now. Lap traffic, Wim Stockman's Butel, that battle has ended. Silva passed Andy Frame. Down the straightaway into turn 11 for the final time for Paul Ilbrink, the Netherlands driver. And I'm going to say if I, met, if I didn't recognize that flag and called him the wrong nation, I'm going to kick myself every time I look at his name. Through the final complex of corners and coming off the final turn, it's going to be Paul Ilbrink's day in prototype 2 as he is your winner at Twin Ring Motegi for week 2. Here in the Prototype and GT Challenge Open Series, coming out through the final complex, your winner in GT2, David Jensen, over 17 seconds separating him and Oliver Brandt. Victorious is David Jensen in car number two in GT2. And here comes Florian Denard, 11 seconds ahead of Levin Draconogen. So he is your winner in GT1. So it's an incredible race. Here at Motegi, your podium is Ilbrink, Asidia Kano, and Rossi, Denard, Draconogen, Ridley, Jensen, Brandt, and Sobolewski. So as the field finishes up here, let's go through the final results from Motegi. So let's go through the final results here. Your winner is Paul Ilbrink in Prototype 2. 
4.2 seconds over Marco Asidiacano in car number 7. Your final podium finisher in Prototype 2 is Fabio Rossi, 32.5 seconds behind. Robert Jakubowski is 4th, then it's Fabricio Silva and Michael Booth in the Prototypes. Florian Denard, your winner in GT1, and let's actually sort it by class here. Your winner in GT1, Florian Denard, and Levin Draconogen is in second. Peter Ridley sprays the champagne in third in the prototypes. As Stefano Gurriali finishes fourth, Patrick Bieri and <clears throat> is your last runner in GT1 as Liam Matthews and William Levescu. Uh, Levescu was out on the start and Matthews had an issue with his car on lap number two, I believe. And GT2, David Jensen uncontested throughout the race except for during pit stops. Oliver Brandt and Richard Sobolewski had a battle all race long. They are your podium finishers, second, third. Jonathan Hall in fourth place. Jonathan Fuller in fifth place. Yuri Budnick had contact with Wim Stockmans, I believe it was. Matt Orr is in seventh. Andy Frame is eighth. Jonathan Butel is ninth. And Wim Stockmans rounds out your top ten here at Motegi. So I am incredibly happy that you guys could join us here on the Automotive Sports Network for week number two of the iRacing.com Prototype and GT Challenge Open Series from Twin Ring Motegi. Next week, we head to Brands Hatch in England for week number three, and hopefully we'll see you there as well. So for everyone here at ASN, congratulations to Ilbrink, Denard, and Jensen, your winners in the three classes. We'll see you next week, but until then, so long everyone.